Hello everybody, Adrian Plus here. Yes, and Bridget, hello. And what number are we? I think it's 156, isn't yes. it? Yes, I don't know. Someone has sent us something about an earlier number, which we will tell you about next week, because I've <laughs> written it on an envelope somewhere. I apologise. <laughs> somewhere that you've lost. Yeah, probably. Okay. Um, oh, well, that's yeah. really edifying for everybody, Adrian. It is, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so it's not been a... I mean, news-wise, this has been a bit of a miserable week, hasn't it? Yes, I, I felt quite down this week, really. I, you know, you, you, you listen to the news or you look at the news on, on a laptop or something and it's, it's hard to find anything that makes you feel good somehow. I, I, mm. maybe, that, maybe it's wrong to be looking for something that makes you feel good, but certainly I've struggled to find anything. What about mm. you? I, it's it's quite horrible at the moment. Whether that's a reflection of my mood, I'm not sure. But I mean, uh, lots of violence as usual in Europe and um, disputes and yeah. and uh, things about individuals and it well, it, it right. is easy to get depressed. I was reminded of that old. It's not a joke, really, but you know the the man who is asked by somebody who who looks after the important things in your life with your wife and she says well I uh, he says my wife does the um, washing up and the cleaning and the getting the meals and mm -hmm. looking after the children mm -hmm. and I w worry about the important things like the state of the world and uh, <laughs> you know, the well fortunately that that's thing. pretty out of date <laughs> yes, actually I know, I know I mean, but, uh, no, but what it reminded me of was the fact that that isn't the world no. I mean, the, the, the world on the news is the world, but it, it, it's as much the world in our inner lives and in our daily yeah. lives. That, and it's easy to get uh, kind of well distracted feel, from that. I mean, you feel that the world is searched for bad news. And, and I, that is, I think, one of our problems that we, you know, I know there was a, a horrible crash somewhere in the world and I found myself thinking, well, that is awful, but I, I can't respond to that in any way. Um, it is that whole compassion fatigue thing that they talk about. But it, it has been a tough week, I think. Mm. And there are things I find quite frightening about it, really. But, our, I mean, our last couple of weeks, have, there have been some difficulties. Um, but we have both reflected on the fact that there are one or two things that although when you say them they seem small mm. actually are really make a difference <laughs> yeah um, well there was one perhaps in particular wasn't there i mean we're talking about in a week where uh, our uk news is dominated still by strikes and mm. there's a a railway strike going on at the moment which is really tough for a lot of people and maybe right maybe wrong that's mm. not what i'm thinking about but but it does make you feel fairly negative mm. perhaps and a lot of people have reason to feel fairly negative that's about right. about um the railway companies and, and we thing. had to make a journey didn't we which was we which did. was quite significant for us um, in many ways but to go from where we live which is near Durham on the train down to King's Cross which we used to um, consider which was a easy. total yeah. doddle I mean we used yeah, to love it just right. pop on you pop on the train yeah. and then you get on the, on the <laughs> tube takes the strain whatever. all that stuff yeah but we knew we had to because because my w movement isn't good we we actually took a, a push wheelchair not my electric powered one because uh, we weren't sure whether we could take that other one. Anyway, we took it and we organised. more to the point, we were we organised help. Didn't yeah, because because yeah. it was really King's Cross. Mm. I mean, anybody who travels to London knows that it's not the train that takes the strain bit. It's the bit when it stops taking the strain and you have to walk. Yeah, and very often right, you yeah. have to walk a heck of a long well, way. Well, uh, King's along Cross means long time since I was there, but. The underground, for instance, from there to places like Victoria, it seems endless. Mm. Um, but we, we, it was okay. We got on the train and we did have help at the beginning, which was good. And then we got to King's Cross and we're a little bit worried because we had to make our way through streets we didn't know to a hotel we didn't yeah, know. Yeah, so first, first the platform, then yeah. the forecourt, then getting to this hotel yeah. where we were staying for the night, that's right. And the first bit worked out very well because there was a man with a ramp 
who came to the door a of our apartment. A yeah, a man with a ramp. <laughs> and he put the ramp on the train, and that was fine. We wheeled the chair down, and I sat on the chair. And he said, uh, right, I'll, I'll push you down to the end. So mm. actually, Which you, you said you'd push me, and he said, no, no, I'll, I'll push him. That's right. So that was fine. So we, we thought that's great, didn't yeah, we? Getting we did, as yeah. far as the yeah. forecourt, as far as the, uh, mm. uh, the actual exit from the station. And, so and now we were on our said, way Thank you. Yeah, to the end. And he said, um, well, where are you going? And we said, well, we've got, we've got this hotel we're going to. And he got his phone, you know, with its, its um, sat-nav thing on it. And he looked on his phone. He said, well, look, I'll, I'll take you. I'll push the chair. He did. Well, he, he can't possibly have known what, what huge help that was. Mm. Because for us, it was a kind of pioneering thing, this. We've travelled on trains all our lives. But to <laughs> suddenly be unable to move properly is a real challenge. Mm. So and what we loved, if you remember, was he said, he said, um, no, I've got a little while before before another job. And mm. all I could think about was most people, maybe, maybe not most people, might think, oh, good, I've got time for a coffee or I'll, I'll yeah. go and look at my phone or I'll, I'll go and, I don't know, whatever. But not necessarily thinking, mm. uh, I'll use that time, that spare time, yeah. to actually push this man across several roads and mm. round corners and right up to the entrance of our hotel and, and he wasn't he clearly wasn't angling for a tip no um he was so so good about it all and yeah. we got to the hotel and um we had to go up a couple of steps there but that was okay mm. but i don't think he probably won't have he'll ever know no. what it meant to be helped to do that and ob obviously in the context of this world and the news at the moment it's a it's a tiny thing but mm. i was looking today at um everybody knows this i think it's a bit in the new what well, many people do the bit where the, the it's in the temple and everybody's putting money in the treasury mm. so most people would be putting a portion of their wealth in. They'd be putting a... A tithe, yes, uh, absolutely. Perhaps a tithe or mm. perhaps more or mm. perhaps less mm. or whatever. Mm. And there was one lady who was a, a widow. And, of course, widows, there was no s social services then. So nope. if you were a widow, unless you had a family who would support you, you wouldn't have any money. Yeah. And she put um, two very small, and that's how they describe, two very small copper coins in the temple treasury. And what intrigued me was that uh, it's a, Jesus got the disciples together. Yes, to point obviously it out. He thought, this this is fascinating. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. And he was obviously really struck by it. And he called them over and he pointed out to him. And this, I think, is the thing that triggered me about what this chap had done. He said um, she has actually given more than all the others because they've given um, whatever they decided they would of their wealth. But she's probably given all she had. Yes. Yeah. And I thought, well, welcome to some kind of magic currency in the spiritual world. Yeah. It's really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, we live in a world, don't we, where, the, where, where the, that, that um, expression, job's worth, you know, it's more than my job's worth. That mm. feeling that you do what you should do up to the point where you're paid up to and then that's it you know that's that's your you've, you've done, done your, your lot, bit yeah. you've done your there used lot. to be a tv series called about that didn't <laughs> I, I don't know did they? yeah it was uh, yeah, i can't remember who it was it was but uh, i mean yeah. for a lot of the people as you say in sharp the intake of breath it was called some people will remember that david jason okay anyway go on <laughs> right, well, all I was going to say was if you actually think of the widow and the coins mm. and the... You're right, most of the people would be giving the amount they should give mm. and probably feeling quite pleased that they were giving the amount that, that they knew they were allocated to yeah. give. They fulfilled their the they requirement. Fulf yeah, the they fulfilled their requirement. Yeah. And there's yeah. absolutely no doubt that that yeah. man fulfilled a great deal more. Yeah. And I think what struck me was, you know, one of the blessings that many, many people have talked about coming out of COVID was that people of all faiths and none went a lot of extra miles. Yeah, and as did. I trundled yeah. along behind you, um, while this man was pushing you over the roads and round the mm. corner, 
And I thought of that, and I thought, I know this isn't the same as the sort of miles that people went sitting with people in hospital, contacting relatives, I mean, really difficult things, but it was literally extra miles. And, yes, it and was, I, yeah. And, and I, I thought... You measure it, you don't measure it by that, though, do you? You measure it by what it meant to us. Yeah. And... Well, yes, but 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 um, during COVID, people did measure by yeah, by right, something yeah. other than currency, by yeah. by kindness. That that became a, a a real currency, didn't it? So when you talk about this magic currency, well, it's uh, it's really fascinating because Jesus didn't waste words, and sometimes he used metaphors. Yeah, but the thing that struck me as I read this uh, yet again, read it so many times. Um, he seems he seems to be saying that actually in this other equally solid world the spiritual world whatever that is those two copper coins actually became valuable beyond anything we can understand mm. and we don't quite know what that means obviously but did it also say at one point store up treasure in heaven people are always saying Jesus was against money but um, and so there's a bit of a, a clue there and the with this, n this nice man who came and uh, I'm sure he didn't do it for, well, I don't know, it was for a religious reason. I think he did it because he was very friendly and generous. But the principle holds good with that because that we've talked about it I don't know how many times since then. Yeah. And it lights up memories of a, a, a couple of weeks that were quite dark sometimes, not just because it was useful, but because it reminds us of the the power and the value of undemanding kindness yeah. it was so much yeah. more valuable than yeah. that as you said that man could ever imagine yeah he was he would be amazed he was. absolutely amazed yeah. yeah does it remind you i mean i've been quite busy today but i've had it in my mind you know all the way through today thinking of the currency of kindness that yeah. it, it it it's something you can't value in terms of the world well, you just precise can't. That's what I'm saying exactly, that it, it's a I currency know. that we know nothing about yeah. I yeah. have been thinking about there's a there's a an autobiography that I read some years ago by a, uh, a performer and writer I'm very keen on I would say it was p p obvious reasons if I tell you what I was thinking but he tells the story very briefly and very um, very much not in order to show himself off I'm quite sure there was an older man a friend of his who worked in theatre and TV and he did something that he shouldn't have done no doubt about that which resulted in all of his associates and all of his friends completely cutting him off and shunning right. him except for this man and his wife who took him in to live with them until mm -hmm. the storm abated Mm. But the important thing was that they didn't do that because they approved of what he he'd done. No. Because they didn't. No. But even less did they approve of this cold, unified blast of rejection mm. um, that had just frozen their friend into a sort of hopelessness. Mm. And <laughs> I couldn't help thinking someone somewhere must have been writing in the dust <laughs> and saying, you lot, you lot who've... Um, turned your back on this person you just take a look at yourselves yeah. and see what's, yeah. Uh, yeah. what's happening with you yes I mean it is so easy isn't it it's so easy to join the crowd really and I have felt that I mean there's been well there's been one story dominating the press this week about someone that most people will know who we're talking about but there's somebody else connected with the church that a lot of people might know about um, that that you know they've they've seen their lives their futures their hopes their dreams crumbling because of something they've done maybe lies that they've told or not done something or not that done they're but, accused but, of, but yeah, yeah but but yes absolutely but yeah. that isn't what's horrified me the most you know yeah. it's been like salivating jaws mm. of of beasts wanting to surround it feeling that they can somehow bring somebody down and and enjoying the process i've i've found that almost harder you know like mm -hmm. you say everyone makes mistakes who was it you know nobody 
could throw that stone at that woman because mm. everybody messes up but yeah. some people more than others and some people are uh, you know I, I, I know but it, it I don't like it I don't, I don't like, like what's it what's happening I've never I've never understood uh, obviously because I wasn't there and times are different but the, the people who came to watch executions I was thinking about that too and lynch mobs Yes. In America yeah. and uh, other places, the idea, the the, the this bloodlust. It is uh, a bl- yes, uh, it of is. the of the modern lynch mobs, which is actually yeah. only perceptible because of things like social media and things. It's a, a it it's absolutely amazing and it's abhorrent because it it it's unreflective. It seems to have an appetite that is connected with something other than what's happened or what somebody has, has done and it n- very little to do with truth or guilt or innocence or any of that I think that's true really um, so what is it what happens I mean I, I don't want to say what happens to people I want to find what happens in us that in any way we want to follow stories that mm. are about people who have failed badly and mm. messed up you know and and there's a sort of desire to under to know more. Mm. I mean, what is that about? Well, if if we're honest, I mean, if you think about something like gossip, which is completely different. I know it's well, different not really. Thing. Yeah, but what the point I'm making is that gossip is fun. Mm. You know, if someone says to you, "Have you heard about George? What he did?" Mm. Um, the the grown-up part of you thinks, "I don't want to hear what George did, and I don't mm. want to." disguise gossip as something else um, but actually there's another part of you <laughs> that thinks I would really like to know what George mm. did but I'd like to know in such a way that I can go on um, telling myself that I'm not really interested mm. and I, with this it's really hard because if you see the name of somebody you think I'll oh, just have a quick look and see mm. what's transpiring mm. now what's happening now mm. and mm. I don't like it in me I don't, I don't no. like that but like you said about that couple, they, it wasn't that they they approved of what this person had done. They didn't. No, not uh, at all. At all. No. But 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 they were fueled by kindness and by the knowledge that if they were following Jesus in any way, he would not be part of the baying crowd mm. because he never was. No, he wasn't ever. No. Mm. That's interesting, isn't it? Well, that would have been bewildering for the disciples. I mean, they they may well have said to him, "You know, you're you're going to you're going to be with people who drink too much. Yeah, you're going to be with prostitutes if and you, tax collectors. If you do that, people will say, and they did. They'll say, so you approve of this to you? And Jesus yeah. would have said, No, no I, I don't. But nor do I approve right. of your 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 attitude to them. Yeah. He just said yeah. to the Pharisees. I wish I didn't have to be with you lot. I wish people wouldn't say, oh, he's been with the Pharisees. I'd be very embarrassed about that. Yeah. But I'm not because it's part of the job. It's part of what I yeah. do. So, yes, I, I, I love the fact that it was that, that straightforward. Mm. But I don't think it's as easy as... It's not easy at all. It's a heck of a challenge, isn't it? That's, that's the yeah. truth of it. I mean, um, it's, it's so hard to try to stay pure in your mind in the middle of things. I mean, we're, we are so fallible. There's no doubt about that. And do you remember what, I think that's um, true, yeah. Do you yeah. remember what Jesus said before Peter, before he was, before Peter was going to be tempted beyond what he could cope with? He mm. said, the devil's going to sift you, but I will be praying for you. And it's mm. that idea that Jesus understands us mm. and and that if we do turn to him, he's praying for us that we won't fall and fail mm. and be part of yeah. the crowd that shouted for Barabbas and not for him. Yeah. It, it, it's joining in the popular... Mm. I don't know. Uh, I've I found it very... Very, I've been quite sad this week, really, not because of any one particular situation, but just a feeling of, of, I don't know, just of so much cruelty and so much pain, mm. so much dishonesty, so many lies, so many, everywhere you look. And that's why we have to 
somehow become aware of the immense value of of things that are golden in character yeah of kindness caring for other people yeah and and remember they are not small exceptions mm. but there are lots of them mm. we've known a lot of very kind people in we our have. lives and they've changed our lives and they would only think they'd got two small copper coins yeah, in our exactly. lives yeah and i hope there might have even been times when we've thought well we haven't got a clue what to do here but mm. we've tried to give a couple of whatever coins. we had yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, I, and i know that applies to so mm. many people that we know who've we gone on being kind someone we know very well died this just this week oh. didn't she and she, she was w she was pure gold she, she really was well she was and she wouldn't have thought she was so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, so that seems to happen more and more as you get older, doesn't it? <laughs> People dropping around you. Oh dear. Anyway, a very silly <laughs> thing I thought about was Charles yeah. Kingsley. Um, he wrote lots of through the Water Babies and my other things, all sorts of things. Yeah, well, that's controversial for starters. Oh, I have well, to stick to what you can. Oh, I'm not bothered about that. I mean, one of the one of the little rhymes he wrote was. Um, <laughs> Silly, really. Come on then. He says, "Do the work that's nearest, though it is dull at whiles. Helping when you meet them, lame dogs over stiles." <laughs> Perhaps the uh, railway employer had read that, looked at you with the wheelchair, <laughs> well, exactly, and thought, "Well, that's a lame dog." Exactly. Well, it but doesn't matter what he thought. He no, did it. No, it doesn't. No. And uh, I just encourage people to be proud of the kindnesses they're able to offer. Not proud, yeah. but. To say this is this is not just worth doing. Mm. This is I this is money into the treasury in some way we've never understood. Not to do it for money, but to know it feeds into the kingdom for Christians <sighs> and for others. Well, what, whatever it is that they they his, believe. His his two penneth, if you like, mm. became gold for us, didn't yes, it? it? We did, got yeah. into that hotel yeah, and yeah. we were so warmed by it. Mm. Because you had actually felt quite diminished in this wretched chair, hadn't you? Oh, it was and, terrible, uh, yeah, absolute um, misery. Uh, yeah. It, it was so not what you want. Mm. And, and I know that part of you wanted to say to um, to anybody who saw you, this isn't really me, you know. Um, I, right, I, yeah. I just hired this chair because, I, you know, it's hard. And I mean, that's nothing compared with what a lot of people are experiencing yeah. in terms of disability but it can be diminishing. So there we are. So maybe the greatest currency of all might be kindness. It ju might just Yeah, we'd kindness. love to hear any little stories you have of that little extra bit of kindness that made a huge difference. Yeah, that'd be good. See you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.